The Dreamcast is a console with a ton of history behind it. If I made a video game's tidbits for every single bit of information out there, I'd be unable to focus on other bits of info. So this is a special episode where I tell all about that special console, the Dreamcast. As Sega was preparing to leave the hardware business, they had done several things. The first involved Isao Okawa trying to negotiate a deal with Microsoft while the Xbox was in development. But the Xbox could support backwards compatibility with the Dreamcast as an attempt to prolong the life of the software, as well as adding a bigger library to the Xbox. Unfortunately, the negotiations never went through and the Dreamcast was soon discontinued. The second thing that occurred was that Sega announced they would be bringing its IPs over to other consoles. This included seeing Game Boy advanced versions of Choo Choo Rocket, Jet Set Radio, Crazy Taxi, and Space Channel 5. This also meant that planned Dreamcast titles were moved on to other platforms. Among them were Shinobi, Toe Jam and All 3, Gun Valkyrie, Panzer Dragoon Orta, Super Monkey Ball, and Virtua Fighter 4. This also meant that games released on the Dreamcast would later see ports on the later consoles of its generation, such as Crazy Taxi, Grandia 2, Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, Space Channel 5 Parts 1 and 2, Fantasy Star Online, Power Stone 1 and 2, and Shenmue 2. Skies of Arcadia was originally planned to have a PS2 port, but was instead cancelled and given a port on the GameCube instead. Even today we're seeing ports of Dreamcast titles on current generation systems such as Rez, Ikaruga, Trigger Heart etc. Celica, Virtual On, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Soul Calibur, God of, Mark of the Wolves, and we'll soon be seeing Sonic Adventure and Crazy Taxi, with other titles that have yet to be revealed. Around 2006, Kuju Entertainment had created concept art for another installment in the Jet Set Radio series. Unfortunately, the idea never took off as it would seem Sega had no interest in reviving the series. This also happened to be the same year where we would see the disastrous Sonic the Hedgehog title that was released on the Xbox 360. Though with Sega really wanting to change their image around with the amount of quality titles that they've been pouring out and their plans to release Dreamcast titles onto current generation consoles, perhaps now would be a better time to pitch an idea of this sort to Sega than it was four years ago. Now, one might also see it as Sega not wanting an outside source handling one of their own IPs. A smile bit, the original development group behind Jet Set Radio is defunct due to the Sega and Sammy merger. While Panzer Dragoon Orta wasn't in development by Team Andromeda, the previous Panzer Dragoon developers, it was still at least made up of members part of the original group. While rumors have constantly flown around that Skies of Arcadia would be seeing a sequel, dating back to the early mid-2000s, the original group behind the title have given Vice, Ica, and Fina each a cameo in their PlayStation 3 title Valkyria Chronicles, with Vice and Ica being recruitable characters. This is actually pretty similar to finding Cloud Strife and having him join you in Final Fantasy Tactics. Speaking of the end of the Dreamcast, in 2003 Sega had officially shut down virtually every server that supported online play for the Dreamcast, among them being the majorly popular Fantasy Star Online, which was the last to be shut down as Sega delayed shutting down the servers for that title. However, PSO's server shutdown only affected the North American region, as Europe and Japan got to enjoy PSO on the Dreamcast until 2007. Even with the massive shutdown, there are actually three titles that are still playable online officially due to the fact that Sega does not run their servers or simply has a different method for them to play online. Those titles are 4x4 EVO, Star Lancer, and Sega Swirl. Unofficially speaking, there are two titles that can be played via private servers, Fantasy Star Online and Quake 3 Arena. Three if you want to get technical and count Fantasy Star Online version 2 as a separate game. Continuing on the subject of online play, Sonic Shuffle was originally planned to include online multiplayer. However, the concept was removed and multiplayer was restricted to local play as the game's deadline prevented Sonic Team from properly incorporating the feature, as well as dealing with the loading times. This would be the second instance where we'd see a 3D Sonic title rush to meet its deadline, with problems ensuing and features cut out, which would later seem to be a recurring theme with Sonic games as the years pass. The cancelled aerial combat title, Propeller Arena, was to actually include online voice chat similar to Alien Front Online. However, because the game was cancelled and the full game was leaked online much after Sega had shut down its servers, the only ones who were able to test the online functions of the game were the developers and testers. 
Now going back to Fantasy Star Online, it turns out that the Sonic team was so frustrated with the amount of cheating that occurred within the Dreamcast version that they literally gave up. Because so many people had obtained items that they were not meant to get a hold of yet, Sonic team cancelled several planned online quests and download quests that would enable players to obtain several items including weapons, armors, and mags. However, these plans were eventually moved onto the GameCube, Xbox, and two PC variations of the title, with actually a few quests never being translated into English from the Dreamcast versions until later on in the mentioned ports. Unfortunately, the rampant cheating would soon rise again on the GameCube and Xbox ports, though not to the same degree as it was during the Dreamcast era. Another particular bit of info is that when Quake 3 Arena was playable online, Dreamcast users were able to play against PC users of the same game. The only problem being was that because PC gaming was transitioning into broadband connectivity, Dreamcast users were mainly stuck with being severely outclassed by users users with the faster connection. While the Dreamcast did receive a broadband adapter and Quake 3 Arena was compatible with it, it would only come into play into the Dreamcast's life with a ridiculously low amount actually made available, making it one of the most expensive Dreamcast peripherals to obtain second hand these days. But putting aside dial-up versus broadband, it's best to acknowledge the fact that this is possibly the first time we would get to see cross-platforming in the sense of PC gamers playing within the same games as console games gamers online. This is something we would rarely see, even to this day, which seems to be just available on Final Fantasy XI and was available for PC and PS2 users of Fantasy Star Universe before the server shut down.